Hello, my name is Paul Moyer, and I'd like to welcome you to the uh, 2021 uh, National Capital Area uh, Planning Conference. Uh, we're going to be listening to a session called Assessing Distribution of Bus Transit Service for Equity During the COVID-19 Pandemic. The uh, presentation will be given by Jared Toops. Uh, he's uh, a, a team member at Foursquare ITP. With that, I will turn it over to Jared. All right, uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, like he just said, the official title of this presentation is Assessing Distribution of Bus Transit Service for Equity During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, internally, and for you know, saving some syllables, we just refer to it as the NWCOG Regional Transit Equity Analysis. A um, little bit about us. Uh, the study uh, client uh, was led by the National Capital Region Transportation Planning Board, uh, TPB, which is the Capital Region's uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization and hosted within the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, NWCOG. The study was prepared by Foursquare Integrated Transportation Planning. We're a small transit and transportation planning firm that have been based here out of D the DC region for the past 15 years and recently headquartered in DC itself. Um, we do a lot of work in the mid-Atlantic region, but have a portfolio that goes across the country, particularly up and down the East Coast and even in Canada. So the scope of this project, what we were tasked with uh, figuring out is how did the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent recession impacts local bus service in terms of service reductions and their impact on equity and marginalized populations. Um, as an overall rule, this study focused exclusively on local bus. Um, we just know uh, from other sources that rail and commuter bus tend to be a, have a higher threshold for lower income and in certain marginalized groups due to higher fares, longer stop spacing, and so we really wanted to focus on local bus because it's the most expansive and the most accessible. And the final goal of this project was to provide a standardized resource for the region's transit providers to reference and discuss as they bring back service um, as, as we, you know, the economy picks up and adjust service to match a new post pandemic conditions, post being, you know, depending on who you ask. Um, this study was more of an inventory and an assessment or a resource for people to reference. It didn't really include recommendations. We amassed the data and presented it in numerous ways. It's up to the providers to determine how to meet these uh, equity gaps that we'll point out that we provided. So part one, uh, distribution of transit service. This was essentially taking a large uh, inventory of equity and local bus service. Um, looking at both the types of service, frequency during certain times of day, the span of service, and then comparing these different service levels at different times of day to a few key groups. Um, looking at equity emphasis areas, um, a geographic unit I'll discuss momentarily. Looking at marginalized populations, which we'll define uh, in a later slide and also looking at essential workers, a term that most of us probably didn't think too much about before the pandemic, but now has be, become you know, part of a national dialogue. These essential workers who work in food service or medical settings, are they able to get to work when we start cutting service during the pandemic? Um, first, we looked at marginalized populations and this was in a sense, a large data dump, a big table comparing the access for these various marginalized groups compared to the population uh, as a whole, based on if they were within a quarter mile of a bus stop. So these populations include total population, persons of color, low income households, um, low wage jobs, uh, low wage workers, uh, the full list here on the right. The variables italicized are variables that we included in the equity index, which we'll talk about later in the presentation, but we want a large list of just general variables. Um, in terms of our data sources, all of our sources regarding transit level of service, 
were from GTFS feeds, and then demographics and employment data were from the American Community Survey and uh, LEHD, respectively. Um, also mentioned equity emphasis areas. These are predefined geographies by uh, TPB, and they are small, small geographic areas that have significant concentrations of low income, minority populations, or both. And so these just provided sort of another frame of reference to compare to the general population. Okay, if you live within an equity emphasis area, what is your access transit compared to the general population? And then finally, like I mentioned, essential workers. This was not a data set that's predefined in the census, obviously. Um, we wanted to get a sense of essential workers at both where they live and where they work. For home locations, we just used uh, low wage workers as a proxy from LEHD uh, data. For work locations, uh, the CDC provided a long list of industries it considered essential at anywhere from the four to six digit NAICS code, um, as seen here on the image on the right. And this was really helpful. Unfortunately, data at this detail fidelity doesn't exist beyond the county level. So we were forced to interpolate uh, essential job counts at the block group level by looking at the distribution of larger NAICS categories, the two digit NAICS categories at the county level and sort of interpolating those down. So when we map and talk about essential worker counts, it's an estimation at best based off of parent geography. Um, so part one results, this map is one of many that we made in the series showing the density of all these various groups I've mentioned, uh, marginalized populations, job counts, et cetera, and their, real, and their density, um, both within and outside of a quarter mile bus stop buffer. So it's a way to sort of very quickly see, oh, if you see the bright red, that's a lot of whichever group you're looking at and here, overall job density, that's not within this quarter mile buffer. So it's a quick and easy way to get a sense of where there's bus service, where there's not, and what are we missing? Um, we also just looked at percentages of all these different variables and compared them to uh, within these bus buffers to the greater MWCOG study area. For example, 65% of people of color and 74% uh, of low-income households are within a quarter mile of a bus stop compared to 60% of people of color or uh, house, or, sorry, 60% of the total population or total households as a whole. And so we had a lot of these conclusions that compared these percentages. And the overall almost consensus we found is that while all of these marginalized population groups have more access to transit overall than the general population, once we start looking at high frequency transit, typically 15 minutes in the AM peak or 30 minutes during Saturday in the day, um, they lost this advantage. So they have access to more general transit, high quality transit, and they start to lag behind the region overall. Um, so for part two was to continue this analysis, take all these demographics and provide more distilled, uh, distinct references for transit agencies to be able to review and uh, make decisions off of. And we had three related but distinct deliverables. The first being a network, job, a network jobs accessibility analysis using a conveyal. The second being a list of routes and their revenue hour changes. And the third being our equity and service gaps analysis. So network jobs analysis, we used an online tool uh, called Conveil to get a sense of within a 45 minute bus trip, how many jobs do you have access to? And we looked at all jobs for all workers, um, all jobs for workers within equity emphasis areas, access to essential jobs for workers, not all workers, excuse me, comparing access to both all jobs and essential jobs for workers both within equity emphasis areas and outside of equity emphasis areas. And what we generally found is that the number of jobs accessible, much higher overall for all jobs compared to essential jobs because there are far more. Um, and everything tended to decrease over time from the midday peak to the midday to late and relatively proportionately. 
Um, if you're within an equity emphasis area, you tended to have access to more jobs, typically because most of these equity emphasis areas cover the densest parts of the region. So they're just closer into DC um, versus outside of the equity emphasis area is the rest of the region, which includes a lot of exurb and rural areas, um, which we thought was overall good news. Um, the second, the revenue hour change by route, this was just a client request of, we'd like a simple list to show each provider which of their routes saw the biggest uh, reductions in service due to the pandemic so that it, they can get a sense of what's priority to bring back. And so we just compared um, the average weekday revenue hours for every route and uh, ordered them by relative change in magnitude. So you can see here a handful of routes from three or four different providers that saw a um, complete, a 100% reduction in weekday revenue hours. And then finally, the level of service and equity indices. Uh, we built two separate indices um, for each block group in the region. One was based on the change in the transit level of service or the average number of trips per stop. This was scored anywhere from five to 25. So the more service that a block group lost on average, the closer to 25, um, technically negative 25, the score became. On the other side, we looked at an equity index based off of the five marginalized population groups we identified earlier, including uh, people of color, disabled populations, low income households, and those were each scaled based off the relative percentage one through five to where you added the five variables together to get a score between zero, a score between five and 25. Um, and then calculating the difference between the two, you get your gap score as shown in this graphic below. And the overall idea was the gap score would be higher if areas that had a higher concentration of these equity groups lost more service. And so here it's showing kind of just visually what we did. The transit equity need index was this first positive 25 scale to see where there's the most, the most highest concentrations of these equity groups. Um, the transit level of service change looked at the percent reduction or increase in uh, the number of trips on any weekday. We later converted this to the negative 25 score. And then by calculating the numerical distance between the scores for each block group, we got a sense of areas with the largest gaps. So in the final map here on the right, you can see uh, a lot of it, a lot of the district is included, but some of the highest scoring areas were parts of uh, Prince George's County, uh, Arlington and Fairfax County, a lot of suburban areas. Um, so it wasn't exclusively limited to the district. Um, so what we took with all this data is we had two deliverables. The first being a white paper that's now available on NWCOG's uh, website, summarizing the findings and the gap scores um, from part one and part two of the project. Um, along with, we in narrative called out certain areas that like this lost the most service during this period. I'm sorry, this had the highest gaps in the AM peak in X, Y, and Z compared to the midday and the late night. And then we uh, also put together a very comprehensive web map of all the data layers we created. And this is more like the forward facing deliverable that is intended for the agencies to be able to review and uh, compare to their proposed service changes. Um, some limitations and lessons learned um, of the study. Uh, the first, we looked at 13 different service providers um, who all had different GTFS feeds. Um, that we had to find a pre-pandemic and a post-pandemic feed to compare the change in service. Some agencies had feed updates every week, like WMATA. Others, the feed didn't change from the pandemic. It was made in 2019 and it still applied. So that just made, it's hard to get a clear snapshot at any period in time where they all overlap and where they're all current. Um, that's just sort of the nature of the beast at looking at a study area this large. Another limitation was our essential worker estimates. Um, we had to interpolate down from the county level, which worked for our purposes, but obviously there are limitations to that. 
Um, curious if now that essential workers are a more common uh, phrase among the general public, if we'll see future census or ACS efforts try to get more detailed data. Um, An intermediary comparison geography, we often just compared equity emphasis areas to the entire MWCOG study region or within a bus stop buffer to the entire MWCOG study region. Um, the region is very large and has some very empty parts and gaps between metropolitan areas. So considering maybe if one were to repeat this type of analysis, having an intermediary geography, like an urbanized area or a more uh, restrictive metropolitan definition to see if these relationships still are the same in terms of uh, where services access is better than average or worse than average. And then finally, our gaps analysis was density neutral. If a area that was relatively low density but high equity scoring had a route that was only one trip an hour and that route was completely cut, that would score very highly. We're not saying that that one, and we just had to make sure, we're not saying that area needs the most transit. It's just that area saw the biggest gap from before the pandemic. So we were never making any sort of a determination of was the transit service available here before the pandemic adequate? We were staying neutral and it's up to the providers to use their own knowledge and policies regarding density. Um, if you have further questions, I have provided my information and email below. And then if we have time, which I'll let Paul decide, um, I can pull up the web map that we developed. I have the link open and sort of navigate around and show what that tool uh, looked like. Thank you, Jared. Um, I'm, I guess we are at 15 minutes. I, I don't, I guess you can pull it up briefly and then we'll close out the call. Okay, appreciate it. Um, yep. Yeah, so you should be able to see the web map now. Can you confirm? Yes. Perfect. So like I said, that's sort of the beginning of the presentation. We had just our general kind of inventory of all these different population groups uh, symbolized by whether they were within or outside of this bus stop buffer. Um, we have data showing the current uh, level of service by all of these different routes and all these different providers. Um, we symbolized the change in revenue hours to show where the most service was lost. We have the, uh, excuse me, sorry. We have the isochrones of our jobs accessibility um, by uh, both total jobs and essential jobs for the four different periods that we used throughout the study. And then getting to the end of things, we have the results of our equity index along with the gaps analysis so that providers could scroll in and see the equity index score was X. We saw X change in trips, which got us a transit, transit change score of Y and the gap between them 43. So this is pretty high scoring. Um, we also have general, general information, a link back to the white paper that this was based off and give opportunity for various stakeholders to be able to zoom in to their region, um, to their specific jurisdiction. And that's all I have. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Jerry. That was very interesting. Appreciate everybody's time and uh, hope you have a good uh, rest of your day. You as well. Take care.